good evening my dear friends welcome to my channel so we have discussed about the general histology and what are the slides we can identify and how to identify i have shown you and today i am going to show the systemic histology so under this systemic histology we are going to discuss about gastrointestinal system respiratory system excretory system and reproductive system so under this system how many slides we are going to see and how to identify i will give you some idea okay i'm going to focus i'm going to show the pictures which i have taken from the textbook and also i have collected from the internet and also i have collected from my friends so let's get started before going to explore this please subscribe to my channel so first system which i am going to discuss is gastrointestinal tract or gastrointestinal system so first slide which we are going to see is the tongue so how to identify the tongue so tongue we can identify the villi so in this tongue we are having two types of villi one is circumvalent papillae and fungiform and filiform papillae uh, but i am not uh, showing the circumvalent papillae rather i am showing the filiform and fungiform papillae and these papillae how to identify is it is lined by stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium stratified squamous non keratinized epithelia and surface shows projections these projections called as papillae surface shows the projections this called as papillae and uh, uh, the circumvalent papillae and fungiform papillae here you can see some small spaces and if you focus under 100x or 45x you may identify some spaces that they are called as taste buds taste buds so but we are focusing in under 10x only so we cannot see clearly the taste buds but we can identify the taste buds if we focus under 45x and 100x so that is about the identification of the tongue and uh, below this submucosal part there we can identify some skeletal muscles also skeletal muscles also that is the identification of the tongue next thing which i am going to discuss is salivary glands so salivary glands identification is so entire the glands serous salivary so salivary glands three types of glands uh, we are going to see serous salivary gland mucous salivary gland and mixed salivary gland in the serous salivary gland we can identify so many acini so many acini so uh, every acini it is triangular shape in cell the acini acinar cells are triangular shape so can we identify any acini here these are all the acini called as serous acini and as the serous acini they are triangular in shape and the lumen is very narrow lumen is very narrow so we cannot see clear lumen and also this it this serous acini they absorbs more stain absorbs more stain that's why we cannot identify clearly but if we focus under 45x then we can identify the shape of each and every acini and the ducts we can identify this is one duct this is one duct and here you can add one duct and this duct is called as interlobular duct which is present in the septum which is present in the septum so what are the identification points of the serous serous salivary gland identification points to write are serous acini are seen and a striated and interlobular this is one interlobular duct and inside that uh, lobule it is called as a striated duct so striated intralobular and interlobular ducts have been seen so these are the identification points you can write in the spotters then we are going to see the mucus salivary gland mucus salivary gland identification how to identify the mucus salivary gland mucus salivary gland we can identify uh, this acini that does not absorb more strain so we can identify pale cells so empty looking and larger mucus acini these are all the larger mucus acini with flattened basal nucleus try to identify the uh, uh, flattened basal nucleus this dark color blue color structure where we can identify the base part towards the base we can identify the nucleus so that is how we have to identify the mucus salivary gland and the points to write are so pale mucus acini mucus acinar cells have been seen and interlobular duct and intralobular duct have been seen and the basal and nuclei nucleus is present at the base of mucus acini is coming to this mixed salivary gland what are the mixed salivary gland identifications so both serous and mucus acini are present in this mixed salivary gland 
So can you find this? Uh, it is somewhere, some places it is dark area, some places it is plain. So that is how we can identify, differentiate the mucus, serous and mixed cerebral gland. And some places we can identify serous demilunes also. Here you can identify one demilune. And here you can see one demilune. Serous demilunes have been seen. So uh, this is how we can identify the mixed cerebral gland. So what is serous demilune? Uh, the, this, these things you are going to study in the text. So try to study once again and how to identify the serous demilunes that is also you have to study and you can easily identify the mixed salivary gland. So that is about mixed salivary gland. Then we are moving to uh, the first part of the GIT after pharynx that is esophagus. So how to identify the esophagus is we can identify some crypts. So esophageal crypts we can identify and it is lined by stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelia. Stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelia. Uh, in the submucus we can identify mucus secreting mucus acini can be seen. So these are the mucus secreting mucus acini can be seen in the submucosa layer. So and uh, muscularis externa some places we can identify skeletal muscles and some places we can identify the smooth muscles. So actually if the esophagus has been taken from the upper one third part, upper one third part and prepare the slide, then we can identify entirely the muscular external is consisting of skeletal muscles. But if the esophagus has been uh, taken from the middle one third part of the esophagus, middle one third, where we can identify half part is skeletal muscles and some place you can identify the smooth muscles. But if the esophagus tissue has been collected from the lower one third in the muscularis externa of uh, outer layer of the lower one third of the esophagus entirely and uh, strictly it is consisting of the smooth muscles. So that is about the esophagus identification. Next we are moving to the stomach fundus. How to identify the stomach fundus is we can identify mucus, mucus, uh, mucosal lining is simple columnar epithelia. This is entire, this is a simple columnar epithelia and we can identify shallow gastric pits, shallow gastric pits. And the lamina propria, lamina propria, this is entire the lamina propria, it is filled with straight tubulo, tubular glands and parietal and tube cells. So these are the tubular glands. Can you see the vertical shape, tube-like structures? These are called as gastric glands. So remember, remember simple columnar epithelia and uh, shallow gastric pits, okay, shallow gastric pits upwards the lower third, lower part, we can identify the tubular gastric glands, tubular gastric glands. And also muscularis layer, muscularis external, it is consisting of the smooth muscle bundle, smooth muscle bundle. That is how we have to identify the stomach fundus. Then we are moving to the stomach pylorus. How to identify the stomach pylorus? So mucosal, uh, mucosa is lining, is simple columnar epithelia, entire this is lined by the simple columnar epithelia and the pits here you can see that this is one pit this is one pit deep gastric pits deep gastric pits and lamina propria lamina propria enter this is the lamina propria and it is filled with uh, coiled tubular glands coiled tubular glands can you find this is a, a round okay so this is coiled tubular glands can be seen in the stomach pylorus only where we can identify in the fundus tubular means uh, elongated elongated uh, tubular glands, gastric glands can be seen in the lamina propria of stomach fundus. So that is about uh, differentiation between stomach fundus and the pylorus. Let us see the next part of uh, GIT. So duodenum. So how to identify the duodenum is, so the mucosa is converts into folds. So finger shaped villi. So the folds are called as villi here in the small intestine. So the first part of the small intestine that is duodenum finger shape villi we can identify and here you can see the muscularis mucosa then in the submucosa we can identify abundant amount of the glands the glands are called as Brunner glands so presence of the Brunner glands and finger shape villi is seen so intestinal glands can be seen in the duodenum so these are the identification points you have to write and these are the uh, Brunner glands you have to search for it so when you whenever you find some glands in the submucosa and the villi can be seen that is nothing but the duodenum next part is jejunum jejunum shape is tongue shape villi so mucosa is converts into the folds and these folds are called as villi this villi is tongue shape villi we can identify and the goblet cells can be seen 
goblet cells can be seen and the intestinal glands can be seen in the lamina propria so these are the identification points of the jejunum then you are going to see the uh, ilium ilium the villi is shorter can you see the villi so villi is shorter then intestinal glands can be seen and this is the muscularis mucosa layer then in the submucosa we can identify uh, aggregated lymphatic follicles aggregated lymphatic follicles called as payer's patches so payer's patches can be seen in the submucosa of ilium and the villi is short villi and the intestinal glands can be seen so these are the things identification points you have to write under ilium then moving to the large intestine what are the things you have to identify in the large intestine so large intestine it is entire we cannot identify any villi here in the large intestine but we can identify the more number of goblet cells more number of goblet cells and the epithelia is simple columnar epithelia simple columnar epithelia with the goblet cells even the small intestine it is also lined by the simple columnar epithelia with uh, with goblet cells occasionally but here in the large intestine there are more number of goblet cells can you see all the spaces here gaps uh, between the columnar cells so those cells are nothing but the goblet cells goblet cells and the tinea coli if you just focus try to see the external muscular is external part we can identify smooth muscle coat is present that is called as tinea coli tinea coli and lamina propria is filled with crypts of lubricant crypt this is one crypt okay so lamina propria is filled with crypts of lubricant okay so that is about the large intestine then we are moving to see the appendix so appendix identification is lining epithelia is simple columnar epithelia tall columnar epithelia and goblet cells here also you can identify the goblet cells lamina propria is filled with lymphoid follicles can you find this is a muscularis mucosa and uh, the entire this um, lymphatic follicle it is encroaching into the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa muscularis mucosa all this area two areas were occupied by the lymphatic lymphoid follicles lymphoid follicles and here we cannot we cannot identify any tinea coli tinea coli and no villi no villi can be seen okay so that is how we have to identify so when sometimes you may get confused with the appendix with the ilium and then how to differentiate ilium and the appendix in the ilium we can identify short villi short villi but here in the appendix we cannot identify any villi and we can identify the lymphoid follicle in the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa layer there we can identify in the submucosa we can identify the lymphoid follicles that is pale patches can be seen in the uh, submucosa layer okay that is how we can differentiate appendix and the ilium so liver slide next is liver liver you can easily identify so you try to observe the hexagonal shape lobules called as hepatic lobules and we can identify some uh, pale structure that is called a central vein from the central vein we can identify some uh, sp uh, wheels uh, spokes of a wheel some structures are uh, running peripherally they are called as hepatic hepatocytes and the, all the hepatocytes are lined lined in, in a straight line like that so they are called as hepatic laminae so what are the identification points to write uh, hepatic lobules can be seen central vein is uh, present and the porta hepatis at every corner we can identify porta hepatis consisting of hepatic arteriole bile ductule and the portal venule okay so here you can see one porta hepatis and here you can see one porta hepatis and here you can see that one porta hepatis these porta hepatis three structures you can see clearly if you focus under 45x or 100x then moving to the gallbladder how to identify the gallbladder so gallbladder is it is lined by simple columnar epithelia simple columnar epithelia with brush border with brush border and below that you can identify fibromuscular uh, wall can be seen fibromuscular wall can be seen in the lamina propria you can identify the elastic fibers elastic fibers can be seen in the lamina propria of gallbladder okay so simple columnar epithelia with brush border and if you just compare this with the small intestine on our so there there we can identify the villi elongated villi but here we cannot identify any villi and it is brush border epithelium brush border tall columnar epithelia and out, outer layer of this gallbladder we can identify fibromuscular wall can be seen so that is how we can identify the gallbladder then moving to the pancreas how to identify the pancreas so pancreas we can identify entirely we can identify serous as in a large amount of 
serous arsenic can be seen with a biphasic stain with the centroarsenar cells centroarsenar cells and uh, where we can identify islets of longer hands this is one islet group of cells alpha cells beta cells okay these are the islets so this is the main differentiation point between pancreas and the serous salivary gland same thing you can identify in the serous salivary gland also there we can identify the duct also here also you can identify the interlobular duct interlobular duct why because pancreas is a partly exocrine partly endocrine gland both uh, they appear same except at the uh, islets so islets can be seen islets of longer hands i a uh, group of uh, alpha cells beta cells and some other cells. these uh, cells can be seen in the pancreas only okay that is how we have to differentiate then moving to the respiratory system respiratory system what are the structures we can identify is uh, trachea and the lung trachea and the lung so how to identify the trachea it is uh, lined by it is lined by so it is lined by pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelia pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelia and below that you can identify it is lined by hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage so sometimes you may get confused with the hyaline cartilage and the trachea so when you when the slide has been focused only this cartilage you have to write it as hyaline cartilage when uh, when it has been focused both epithelia strat, uh, pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelia and the hyaline cartilage then you have to write it as then you have to write it as uh, the trachea okay so that is how we have to differentiate and write then moving to the lung how to identify the lung so lung is also very easy so here where we can identify the alveoli so these are all the alveoli and here you can see the intrapulmonary bronchus intrapulmonary bronch bronchus here you can identify the hyaline cartilage and these are all alveolar duct alveolar duct these are alveolar cells type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells and some places you can identify here you can see that uh, terminal bronchiole terminal bronchiole Ten, in the terminal bronchiole you can identify the mucosal pores so the uh, what to write under the identification points are intrapulmonary pulmonary bronchus has been seen then hyaline cartilage can be seen alveolar cells can be seen and terminal bronchiole can be seen which is uh, which has the mucosal pores okay so that's about the lung now moving to the excretory system excretory system so under excretory system we are going to have kidney ureter and the urinary tract so coming to the kidney what are the structures you have to identify what are the structures so in the kidney uh, here you can see the outer part so there is a uh, capsule then below that entire this is called as cortex part cortex part so in the cortex outer cortex it is consisting of renal carpuscles so this is renal carpuscle and sections of proximal this is proximal and distal convoluted tubules so these are all the small tubules okay so proximal and distal convoluted tubules and this is the bowman's capsule and glomerulus okay so these are all the structures which can be seen in the outer cortex then inner medulla inner medulla we can identify sections of collecting ducts sections of collecting ducts and the loops of henry can be seen in the medulla part of kidney next we are going to see the ureter how to identify the ureter so ureter it is consisting of star shaped lumen can you see the star shaped lumen here star shaped lumen and epithelia it is lined by transitional epithelia or urothelium it is also called as urothelium it is consisting of umbrella shaped cells umbrella shaped cells and muscular tube it is consisting of inner longitudinal outer circular outer circular smooth muscle layer here you can see the inner longitudinal outer circular smooth muscle cell layer can be seen in the ureter then moving to the urinary bladder in the urinary bladder same thing we can identify as you can see the ureter same transitional epithelia can be seen transitional epithelia can be seen and thick muscular coat thick muscular coat which is having the ill-defined layers and the thick lamina propria can be seen thick lamina propria can be seen in urinary bladder then moving to the reproductive system so first one is testes how to identify the testes so testes identification is very easy we can identify these are all the tubules you can identify this is called as seminiferous tubules sections of seminiferous tubules and each tubule it is consisting of spermatozoa at the lumen part lumen part and the immature the spermatids primary spermatocytes 
secondary spermatocytes they are present at the peripheral part at the center part you can identify mature spermatozoa can be seen okay and uh, between these seminiferous tubules you can identify interstitial cells of lady can be seen interstitial cells of lady can be seen between the two seminiferous tubules so that is how we have to identify the testes then moving to the epididymis epididymis identification is it is also very easy we can identify some pale color area is present at the center at the peripheral area we can identify thick uh, a rim like structure and if you try to observe that we can identify it is lined by pseudo stratified columnar epithelia pseudo stratified columnar epithelia and lumen is filled with sperms so that seminiferous tubules all the tubules they connects with each other and forms the epididymis so where we can identify in the testes we can see the spermatozoa and the entire the lumen part it is consisting of mature spermatozoa only spermatozoa can be seen in the epididymis whereas in the testes we can identify spermatids primary spermatocytes secondary spermatocytes but here in the epididymis strictly the spermatozoa can be seen in the lumen okay so that is about the epididymis then moving to the vas difference or ductus difference so identification of vas difference or ductus difference we can identify mucosa is lined by a simple columnar epithelia simple columnar epithelia and sometimes towards the distal end of the ductus difference where we can identify pseudo stratified columnar epithelia pseudo stratified columnar epithelia and it is having a thick muscular coat thick muscular coat thick muscular smooth muscle coat we can identify in the vas difference so that is how we have to identify the vas difference then let us see the prostate so how to identify the prostate so prostate identification is so try to observe this prostate it is a fibromuscular glandular uh, male accessory sex gland so fibro means fibrous part muscular smooth muscles glandular means glands glands can be seen okay so which glands prostatic glands can be seen this is these are all the prostatic glands prostatic glands which are consisting of fascinae or follicles lined by simple columnar cells then mucosa is thrown into folds and lumen contains carpora amylacea so lumen is consisting of carpora amylacea here i am not showing that carpora amylacea and fascinae are separated by thick fibro muscular coat this is one fibro muscular stroma fibro muscular stroma so that is how we have to identify the prostate then moving to the female reproductive system first one is uterus uterus identification how to identify identify the uterus so uterus identification is very easy and uterus it is it is lined by simple columnar epithelia simple columnar epithelia and uh, below that the stroma containing the tubular glands tubular uterine glands these are all called as these uh, circular structures they are called as uterine glands uterine glands and some places you can identify the arteries called as spiral arteries spiral arteries and middle thick uh, muscular layer can be seen in the myometrium here i am showing you only the endometrium in the endometrium we can identify this uh, uterine glands and the spiral arteries spiral arteries then moving to the ovary so how to identify the ovary so ovary identification is so in the outer cortex part this is the outer cortex part cortex part it is consisting of a primordial primary follicles and secondary and graafian follicles can be seen in the inner medulla we can identify the connective tissue so here you can see the entire this is the outer cortex part and this is the inner inner part so in the cortex try to identify the follicular cells these are all the follicular cells and here you can see the uh, one ovum and it is consisting of zona pellucida these are all the follicular cells and this is the gap is called as antrum and these cumulus euphora cells which are present between the uh, margin at one margin here you can see the cumulus euphora cells and these cells are called as corona radiata cells and inside that we can identify primary oocyte primary oocyte okay that is how we can identify the ovary and some places here you can identify the corpus albicans albicans and this is a corpus luteum corpus luteum so these points you can write under identification then moving to the uterine tube how to identify the uterine tube so uterine tube identification is it is lined by it is lined by simple columnar epithelia simple columnar epithelia with cilia okay simple columnar epithelia with cilia and mucosa thrown into some folds here you can see the mucosa it is thrown into folds and it is having a outer layer called as muscular tube muscular tube 
So that is how we have to identify the uterine tube. Then moving to the endocrines. Endocrines identification is, uh, first one is, it is having two parts. One is anti-repetitory and the posterior repetitory. Anti-repetitory where we can identify the adenohypophysis. It is called as adenohypophysis, called as alpha cells, beta cells can be seen. That is chromophiles and chromophobe cells can be seen in this alpha, I mean, anti-repetitory. And this is the posterior repetitory, which is consisting of the nerve fibers, neurohypophysis which is consisting of nerve fibers and pituocytes. Okay, that is how we have to identify the pituitary gland. So can you see the two different parts, anterior and the posterior? Adenohypophysis, neurohypophysis. Then moving to the thyroid gland. The identification of the thyroid gland is, so thyroid follicles can be seen. So these are all the thyroid follicles and they are all lined by the cuboidal cells, simple cuboidal cells. And uh, parafollicular cells can be seen parafollicular cells can be present and highly vascular highly vascular tissue it is highly vascular tissue occasionally you can identify the blood vessels between the thyroid follicles then moving to the suprarenal gland suprarenal gland it is very easy to identify this uh, outer layer it is called as cortex inner layer is called as medulla in the cortex you have to write about three layers zona glomerulosa zona fasciculata zona reticularis how to identify that so try to observe just below this capsule just below this capsule you can identify some inverted u-shaped cells inverted u-shaped cells so those are called as zona glomerulosa cells then below zona fasciculata it is consisting of vertical shaped cells called as zona fasciculata and irregular shaped cells which are present in the inner layer that is called as zona reticularis and then inner medulla medulla part it is consisting of polyhedral chromaffin cells can be seen polyhedral chromaffin cells can be seen so that is about the gland so thanks for watching dear friends this is about the systemic histology and new nervous system already have discussed uh, for uh, midbrain pons medulla i'm going to uh, prepare another session for that so that you will be easily uh, identify and uh, distinguish all the slides so thank you dear friends see you soon with the new class